Hey, what's happening guys? <clears throat> Today we're going to continue on with our project from the uh, the original dual voltage supply. In this you input a single uh, positive DC voltage and we get out a plus and a, a positive and a negative voltage, hence the dual voltage supply. And this is a, a useful little circuit for driving an op amp circuit. So in another video a week or two ago, we use this to power a simple uh, inverting op amp circuit. And then what I did was I took that same circuit and I had some boards manufactured from PCB Way. If you're unfamiliar with PCB Way, they are one of the leading manufacturers of PC boards in China. And you can get five boards for about 22 bucks in about a week. So that's pretty good. And they are sponsoring this video, so thank you to them. So today we're going to put this together. Now, what we've done here is we've taken the original design with that uh, it was a TCL7660 uh, chip. We've taken that, and that is this part of the circuit here. And then we have added in the second part, which is simply an inverting op amp using a TL072. And then on the output here, we will have a, um, a, a, a an amplification, you know, proportional to what we set for the load resistor R2 here in our uh, inverting op amp circuit. And what we're going to do different, instead of using a fixed value, we're going to use a potentiometer so that we can have an adjustable value. Are you with me so far? Good. Let's warm up the soldering iron and put this together. Okay, I'm kind of going to go against convention where I normally put in the... Uh, the ICs last, but in this case I'm going to put them in first because they are going to be just about the lowest components we have here. So that was the uh, dual voltage supply chip and then we have our op amp. Yeah, I know, I'm not socketing them. This is just an iteration of this circuit design. This is not the final design. When we get to the final design, you know, maybe we'll put in sockets and stuff like that then. But for now, I'm just not going to worry about it. I'm sure you guys have all seen me solder enough by now, but for those of you who haven't, we'll just uh, we'll put in a little light light soldering action. Again, I like to alternate sides of the IC. Just kind of spread the heat out as best as I can. So today is uh, December 15th as I'm doing this. And we got 10 days left until the big holiday. I gave my son uh, one of his Christmas presents early yesterday. We were we were hanging out. And he, he knew what he was getting. I mean, it's not like he, I blew the surprise or anything. He wanted a, a PlayStation VR system and uh, some games. So I ordered the games, and I was shocked that they didn't come on disc. They were just download codes. So I figure instead of him... Uh, scrambling on Christmas morning to get everything downloaded. We just have them download it now. So that was a that was fun. It was something we got to do together is hang out and play around with that stuff. We don't he's fifteen and he just doesn't uh hang around with the old man as much as he used to. I guess that's just the way of teenagers, right? Focus. There we go. All right, so we got our ICs in. Got some jumpers. We'll put them in last. Now, capacitors. It's important to know we're you know we're using um, uh, polarized caps, electrolytics. So it's important to know which side is going to ground. And here comes the train. Okay, so I don't know how well you can tell, but there's a ground plane on top here. 
So I just want to verify which side. Yep, that's the ground side. Okay. So the value on the capacitors isn't terribly important in this. The only thing that's really important is that we have them installed in the correct direction. So that's why I was verifying. These are uh, 22 microfarad. So that goes there like that. I'll grab a couple more of them. You don't have to watch. Okay, so our caps are all in place, all polarized correctly, we hope. <laughs> We'll get them soldered in here real quick. The uh, capacitor number two that goes between, I think it's pins two and three or three and four, we can check that in a second, is what is setting up the output on that chip to give us our dual voltage supply. So. Have to make sure it goes in the right direction. But nothing to it but to do it. Pretty easy work. Or easy uh easy soldering anyway. Yeah, all looking pretty good there. Alright. We'll put in a couple of resistors. These are 1K resistors. And again, this is not the final design of the board by any means, so we're just playing around here, trying to see what works best in what configuration, it's things like that nature. Things of that nature. I sound like a Steelers coach, Mike Tomlin, that's what he likes to say, and things of that nature. So we'll get our couple resistors soldered in there. When I'm kind of prototyping, which is what we're doing here, I like to put my resistors in vertically. It makes them easy to get out when you have plated through holes. At least in my opinion it does. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. That's been my experience. Okay, so we're down to putting in our gain setting resistor. And we're going to use this little 10K trimmer pot, which I trimmed one leg off of, so we just have the wiper and one of the outsides. And that will allow us to vary the gain on this simple little amplifier circuit. But anyway, back to what we were talking about, the download. I think that's probably where um, almost all gaming is going to go in the future. You know, there's not going to be any physical media. It's probably all just going to be download, 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 download. I don't know if I like that. I don't know if that's good. I don't know if it's bad. I just know that does seem to be the trend, so we'll have to see what it brings, right? <laughs> I know you guys were probably laughing at some of my my strange methods, but they're just shortcuts. They work. There's no, uh, no tried and true rules on how you're supposed to. Hold the things that you want to solder. There is tried and true rules on what a solder joint should look like. It should look like a little Hershey's Kiss. It looks like an apple. So, no bueno. So we're getting these headers in. We have one header for... Uh, we have one header for power, one header for audio. Now this is the, uh, the header that we had in the old board 
to take power off of. I left it on here so that we could use, use it for some other things if we want. Then we got to put in one more header down here, and that will be where we'll take our audio output. In a final design, you know, we're not going to be using these little 0.1 inch header pins, probably. We should probably be using you know, some sort of proper connector. But for this, like I said, we're just prototyping here, playing around. You want to make things as easy things as easy for yourself as you possibly can. And that's what's great these days about places like PCB Way that allow you to prototype a board for virtually nothing. You know, five dollars for the for the boards. The rest of it's shipping. And you know, five dollar or uh, seventeen dollars for like five day shipping from China's freaking awesome if you ask me yes I know you can make your own PC boards at home and oh look at that we've got ourselves a solder bridge clean off your soldering iron don't retin it and just go like this Whoop. solder bridge gone all right I think we're ready to uh, give her a test. What do you guys think? Yeah? Okay. Our board is soldered up and ready to go. Now I'm going to take you out of the holder here. Pardon me. Hang on. Don't spill your coffee. I'll try and be gentle. We'll go up to the signal generator. And you can see we have about a 1 kilohertz signal. And I am outputting that 1 kilohertz signal here to the spreadboard at about a half a volt AC. Now I'm going to there we go plug in a speaker so that you can hear what this sounds like at a half a volt AC. I'm sure you guys can hear that. And you can see that our voltage has fallen. The speaker is taking some of the voltage. It's an impedance mismatch, but not really a big deal. Now, before you turn to your poison keyboards and start saying, Well, so is this on an oscilloscope? No, not today. And I didn't do it on the last video, and there is a reason for that. Not everybody has an oscilloscope. And I want these videos to be as inclusive as possible. And I'm trying to show you, you don't need to have an oscilloscope to have this kind of fun with electronics. A voltmeter will take you very, very far. Okay? Alright, next. We're coming out of the holder again. So, we have our input signal. And you should be able to see that is a, uh, a sine wave right there. Okay? Will you focus on that? Will you focus? Yeah, maybe. Okay, let's put the light on. There we go. So there's our output signal, or input signal, whatever you want to call it. And you can see it is a sine wave. And we are outputting it at about a half a volt. And then here is our power supply. We will be inputting 12 volts into our board. All right, I'm going to disconnect the voltmeter here. And we'll make some interconnections. This is our output audio, in case you were wondering. And to that, I'll just swap these around so it's happier. We will add the speaker. And then our input audio, which is this right here, we will connect up, move that down a little bit, we'll connect up like so, and then we will connect our 12 volt power supply. Like so. 
so. And see what we get. Ready? Camera died. Sorry about that. So, where, where were we? Alright, we've got our board hooked up except for the power. We've got our input audio going into the input. We've got our output audio from the generator coming there. Everything is looking good. Let's uh let's roll our gain. I think to be down. So we're not starting out too loud. And hook up our ground. Hook up here. There's a little bit. Um, can you guys hear that? Let's, uh, let's crank this up some. Okay, it's clicking, so we are at maximum volume. That's pretty cool. Turn that off, that's kind of annoying. So, there we are. The question is now, where do we go from here? I'm looking for ideas. If you guys have any, let me know. It's a simple circuit voltage power supply, some filtering, and an inverting amplifier. Simple basic electronics. You don't need a lot of fancy equipment. A nice voltmeter is all you need to set up something like this. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. A big thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. And a Merry Christmas to you. That's it. I'm out. Peace.